every year at Flight Fest, the world's largest electric flying event, we have this crazy activity called combat. Combat is where basically hundreds of people throw their airplanes in the air at one time for all out aerial demolition derby. Now, time and time again, every year we have this, we've been trying to come up with the ultimate juggernaut that can basically take everything down. But our community is always one step ahead of us. This year, we have a new design that we're really gonna sink our teeth in. We got work to do. All right, so I'm back from the laser cutter here and I got everything cut out. In the past, we've tried to get really strategic about how we're gonna design an airplane that can take a hit, keep on flying. This year, we just wanna eat planes. And no better way to eat an airplane than making a flying shark. So that's gonna be the theme of our plane this year. It's gonna be a flying shark. And because we wanna be able to eat the planes, we want a big open mouth, we're gonna put the prop inside of it. And that's gonna give this ability, like anything that's small enough to go into the mouth, we want a real strong prop that's gonna chew it and spit it out the other end. Now hopefully if this all works out good, we'll have a really cool flying shark and also something pretty cool in the combat. What do you think? Shark Fish are friends, not food, but airplanes are free game. That's fun. So dude, so you know the resort prop you gave me? Yes. Does that fit beautifully? It's gonna go right in there. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> oh no. That's a 10 inch. Please tell me there's a 9 inch. Oh yes, yes. there's a 9 inch. <laughs> Here, I'll open this up. Like, I don't want to build another one. So here's the idea. Rewind. Basically, um, this is gonna have an open mouth and whatever flies in here, mainly small airplanes, like yes. the easy planes, we'll be able to just chomp up and spit out the other end. But even if it doesn't work like that, uh, we always get taken down with our twin motor airplanes because one motor gets knocked off. Yes. And this way, you know, this is kind of somewhat protected. So mm -hmm. maybe we'll get to chomp up something, maybe we won't, but at the end of the day, this will be protected. So, yes, boom, and how try that size. Thank goodness. Look at that. Go. Oh yeah, that's nice. Yep. And what I'm gonna do is rather than just doing like a B-pack, which you normally swing a nine inch prop, I'm gonna go ahead and go all the way up to an XL motor mm. and go to probably 6S or 5S. And Ooh. that way it'll have a lot higher RPM, a lot more torque. All right. Like where it's headed. Ready for the fin? Fins.com. So Mike's been flying the Carbon Guardian quite a bit lately. And there's a couple of changes we wanted to make to the top plate. So I'm gonna take our new Makara Carvera and mill out a new top plate for it. I have to say this machine is incredible. I've had a little bit of time to play around with it. We've been milling some aluminum parts for our Flight Test UAS products. I don't have a lot of experience with milling. I had a little bit of time to uh, kind of start playing with it a little bit and it's really intuitive, real easy to use. So not only does the CNC machine have automatic tool change, wireless probing, it also has an automatic dust collector, which is gonna come in handy when I go to cut this carbon fiber so it keeps all the dust and nasty stuff contained. Now, this is one of the pieces I made out of aluminum that I was kind of playing around with, and this is also for our Flight Test UAS stuff, so uh, if you guys are interested in any of that, make sure you check out our new website. So I'm extremely excited about this. One, it's small, so it fits in the corner of my office. It's quiet, so I don't hear it running too much, and I am extremely excited just because now I can do all kinds of prototyping and make all kinds of little aluminum parts for us to get stuff done out in the shop. So in a lot of ways, I'm really happy about this just because it expands our reach even farther. We can do everything from foam board to wood products, and now we can even do metal. So now I've got all my carbon fiber pieces set up in the mill. I'm gonna run over to my computer, send the files over here, and we're gonna start cutting this thing out. So I just wanna say right off the bat, the precision and finish that that machine leaves is incredible. I mean, I don't, I don't know if I could get any better from the factory. It's perfect. All right, so if you guys are interested in this machine, I mean, the features are phenomenal. They're pretty much endless. It even comes with a laser engraver. If you guys are interested, make sure you check it out. The link in the descriptions. Dude, we've had some, we've had some unfortunate luck with combat airplanes. Look at this, Josh is feeling. Oh, 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 oh. Also the fact that we have a really awesomely talented community. This is true. <laughs> they're just really good at their craft. They're probably they're more likely more than likely they're smarter than we are. So I mean at the end of the day, we're just we're just trying to get after them. Yeah. But I like that. 
I do have an idea where, at the end of the day, even if we can't beat them, we can psychologically torment them. <laughs> I just want to throw it at you. Can I throw it at you? Yeah, you can. Oh! oh. <laughs> Dude, it almost hit your face! So, Josh is working on his shark here, and he asked if I could make some teeth for him. Some leftover carbon fiber. Figured, uh, He's trying to make one one awesome combat plane, and what better way to have uh, carbon fiber teeth to chomp on some planes in the front. So this should hopefully shred some planes up pretty good and add a lot of strength as well. So hopefully it doesn't damage the nose on the plane when he hits stuff. We'll see what happens, but I'm gonna go over here to the Makara and uh, cut some teeth out. Yeah, all right. right. Did you deliver the shark teeth? Shark teeth, ooh. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Those guys. <laughs> Chompers, dude. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's, it's perfect. Oh my gosh, dude. <laughs> Can you see it? Ah, yes. That dude. is fantastic. Um, Diabolical, Dave. Oh, that's yeah, scary. Dude. That's awesome. Okay. Now we just need to make them so they're like uh, hedge trimmers where they like go like this from each other. You gave me sharp teeth. Let me show you uh, <laughs> what's actually going to be doing the mincing part. <laughs> So you guys this is kind of scary. It. You guys can't see it inside, but we're testing out some new props from our good friends at Zor. And these things are legit. These are specifically sized to fit all of our power packs. And uh, we're gonna put them through the paces in a big way because this is ultimately gonna be what will mince up things. Uh, a lot harder, uh, but also just incredibly. That looks gorgeous. awesome. It's just it's gorgeous. Got, it's got like a weird finish to it. Like, yeah. Like they the have mat. just a really cool mat and then gloss. Yeah. The Vortex. Zor on it. I'm, I'm pretty sure this is a, uh, yeah, collaboration. Jim Fan and Zor oh, collaborating together on this. Isn't that cool? Pretty tight. <laughs> oh my goodness. What just got chopped? I don't know what got chopped. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> what was that? I don't know. Oh yeah, dude! I what happened? It, it hit it. the glue glob right Push, in. Uh, the other, look, see this there's dimple? There's a little tiny dent right there. Glue glob. <laughs> what do they call the little glass bead like that? Oh, the uh, shro? No, is it shroding? No, I don't know. There's some real fancy like glass bead you drop it in water. You guys will know what I'm talking about. Yes. I'm sure, somebody will comment. All right, on here it. we go. Ooh, this is what oh. I've been. Yeah. <laughs> I want to feed it. That is oh, yes. Feed the beast. Interesting noise. Because straight down in, you going down in, it like whips around and just minces it. The mouth. Ooh. All right, I'll, so I'll here, check, check this out. This is like... <laughs> oh my god, it's like a blender! Isn't that awesome? It's like a blender! That's so sick, dude. Yes, you found that right there, dude. Oh, sharks for the win! Right, now all we gotta do is make it fly. What do you got going on, Josh? This is the highly scientific way of putting on the tail. So it's kind of like uh, line up some lines and hope for the best? That's exactly it. <laughs> <laughs> but we were discussing, and if anything, it'll be slightly positive, and that's what we would rather have, you know what I mean? A little bit of a angle up. But uh, to kind of keep everything in, in open air, we're angling this down a little bit. Plus it looks cool, right? Yeah, and just remember everybody, this is the flight test way. Yeah. <laughs> I, it's biting the couch the whole level. You could you could make a jig or you could just shove it up against the couch. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> the couch is our jig. And I think honestly a lot of people get so worked up into making things absolutely perfect. Yeah. If you don't know if it's gonna fly, like at the end of the day, just get it built and get it flying. Right. And then see what it does. And it's pretty quick to know like is it a bad design or is it like crooked? Is it yeah. What do you think, Jen? Very sharky. Yeah. Better than your last one. It looks like a torpedo. <laughs> torpedo. I love the torpedo at home. Wait, torpedo? 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love that, dude. Uh, all right, how's that look, Dave? I mean, yeah. I think it looks pretty yeah, I think it's like cool. Pretty shirky. It, it looks killer. All right. So I'm not sure how this is gonna fly here. So I went ahead and separated both the elevators to their own controls. So basically, if I don't have enough roll authority from these small stubby ailerons, I can basically add that into the elevator anytime I want. Now, if you guys haven't noticed, we've been using our pocket radios now quite a bit. Even on our Monster V17, we use it. This is the ELRS version, but the really cool thing about this is not only the look, we have pre-programmed models with dual rates, fail safe, and so much more. And you can basically take that as a template and you can move it so you don't have to reprogram every single model. These are back in stock and they're going like crazy. If you guys want to get in the hobby, this is sub $100, incredible value. <laughs> All right, everything's working. I think we're ready to take it out for its first flight. But first, we gotta put the teeth on. All right, so I love your teeth, man. <laughs> yeah, I love your airplane. This thing's awesome. Thanks. Now our hope is here that this will fly successfully so then we can immediately turn around, paint it up and make it look awesome for Flight Fest. But the first thing we gotta do is see if it'll fly. Yeah, um, so I'll get it plugged in here. We'll see uh, what happens. We're here at Ready Board Runway here. We're gonna put it in the air. All this stuff that we build can be built out of either Maker Foam or Adam's Ready Board. Adam's Ready Board is what makes both of them. They're phenomenal. So if you guys wanna build your own aircraft or own crazy designs, check out that material. It's incredible. All right, let's do this. All right, I'm gonna go medium throw, so I have plenty of throw. Look, I got high throw too. All right, I'm gonna go with a slightly harder launch because you don't have any air flowing over it. Yeah. So I'll kind of put you up like that and give it a good chuck. All right, you ready? Yep. Three. Good luck, buddy. Oh my goodness! Oh, the adverse roll is real. Oh no. Uh-oh, it's floundering. So literally, <laughs> my right is left and my left is right. Really? Ooh, that is weird looking. All right, I just gotta do differential on my ailerons. But look how slow it flies. <laughs> Dude, where's my throttle? Oh, you're at like eight throttle. All right. Okay, so this is incredible. <laughs> Here's the crazy thing, is my right and my left is actually like backwards. And the reason is, is because there's so much drag on the one side it turns it the opposite way. It's so it's acting like air brakes. Exactly. Like a drag rudder. Yep, so we can fix that. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and do something called differential on the aileron. That means the one aileron will raise up higher than the one will drop down low. And that should give me the drag I need to actually have a true bank. Um, I think at the end of the day, I'm gonna have to start playing with some mixing on the tail, but it flew so slow. <laughs> yeah, it looks awesome. Too. Okay, so winner on CG and the way it flies, we just gotta control the, or we just gotta fix the flight controls and we're good to go. All right, let's see what we can do right. to change it. All right, so I went a little different here. Uh, basically what I have is elevons in the back and I did that differential aileron in the front. So basically this won't drop anymore. You can see as I give controls, we only have one aileron raising at a time. But on the back, you have full elevon control. And this will hopefully also give me a component where it gives me a little bit of rudder. We don't know, weird planes usually mean weird control setups. But the cool thing is, is we can dial all that in and once we have it, we can adjust it individually from there. I can talk to each one of these servos and make them behave in different ways. So now that we know it'll fly, it's just a matter of how do we give the controls to make it fly well. So we're gonna put it back up in the air, see how it does. All right, so Dave, you ready, buddy? All right, we, I don't know what to call these controls, but they're weird and it's a weird plane, so it should work. All right, got throttle, Michael's chasing, here we go, three. Two, one. Oh, a lot faster. All right, turning is How's still it fun, but it's better than, at least I can turn. Ooh, that is kind of weird looking, isn't it? <laughs> it's totally a shock. I think, I think you're right about the fact, like you definitely need big control surfaces to, because there's no air going over it, just the speed. How cool is <laughs> that? It's flying, looking. way better. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna see what high rates do in a second here. All right, that's better. That's so cool. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> and now we know what happens when we do that. That was a total top gun maneuver there. Yeah. I can't believe, like I thought it was gonna be really inefficient. Probably the Zor props too. Those things are a work of art. 
Yeah, they are really cool looking. It is literally stable. We just got to figure out like how to best get the turning. But we're we're getting there. I mean, that's that's that'll work. Yeah, I mean, it looks like you're having pretty good uh, controlled flights. It's so. easy to fly. It just looks weird in the air. It looks like a shark. <laughs> All right, I want to try a vertical punch out. You ready, Mike? <laughs> Dude, that's amazing. It's it's almost like it's one of those things that has one speed. No matter how much you push the throttle, it doesn't really accelerate, does it? You're right about that. And and the other thing too is I gotta definitely make sure you keep a certain speed because once it slows down, since there's no air over the control surfaces, it's it's like flying a jet. You know what I mean? Right, right. All right, I'm gonna bring it in for a landing. We got what we need. I don't know if this is gonna last one flight or all the battles, but it looks awesome <laughs> and it flies it flies really nice too. Look at this. Yeah. That's dead stick. Wow. Is it gonna come down? Look at that. <laughs> Great yes. work, buddy. All right, friends, we are not done here. We have a successful flight. The shark is still in one piece, and we get to take the fight this time. Yeah, so now all we have to do is throw some paint on it, yep. some cool looking decals, make it look more like a shark. Yep, we'll dial in the controls a little more, but we kind of have a thread we can pull on to really get that figured out. Make sure you subscribe because the world's largest electric event is right around the corner. We're going to have tons of videos coming out, including some epic battles with our sharks, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So hopefully we see you at Flight Fest. Take care. See you next time.